Hello everyone. Hope you're doing well. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. My final exams are finally done, and now I can take some time to look at the highly anticipated soy sauce optics problem. This time, I'm bringing out the best technology that I have access to, and hopefully, you will like today's video. So first, let's take a look at today's setup. We have a thin layer of soy sauce, and behind that, we have a white background. This laser diode has a wavelength of 405 nanometers, and it is intended to be used in a laser engraver. We have a lab bench power supply to supply a constant voltage to our laser diode. The voltage that we're supplying is 0.492 volts, and it draws a current of 0.123 amps. And this makes our laser diode have a power of approximately 600 milliwatts. Although our laser diode is rated for 1,000 milliwatts, but 600 milliwatts is still enough to seriously damage your eyes if safety precautions are not taken. 600 milliwatts would be rated as a class 4 laser, which is the highest rating for a laser. So the safety precaution that we have is laser safety goggles that is specified to a narrow wavelength that matches the wavelength of our laser. As you can see, if I place my laser safety goggle in front of the beam, we see that the beam is blocked and we see no laser dot projected onto the screen behind it. As the light of the laser shines onto our sample soy sauce, part of the soy sauce will heat up because it will absorb part of the light from the laser. And we can measure this temperature change by using an infrared thermal camera made by FLIR. Our infrared camera is attached to our phone and using an app on our phone, we can monitor the temperature of the entire environment. We could check the positioning of our soy sauce slide with respect to the laser beam by taking a look at the reflection of the beam. If our reflected beam is aligned with the incident beam, then we know that the beam is normal to the plane of the slide. To make the slide, first I need two pieces of plexiglass. I need the transfer pipette, some soy sauce, and also two pieces of thin 34 gauge wire. The 34 gauge magnetic wires have a coating on the outside, which makes its diameter approximately 200 micrometers across. I will use the transfer pipette to drop a few drops of soy sauce onto one of the pieces of plexiglass. Then I will place these two pieces of thin wire onto the slide, and then also put another piece of plexiglass on top. We could then put clamps on either sides of the slide, and that will complete our soy sauce slide. I really recommend using the lighter soy sauce instead of the darker soy sauce because a thickness of 200 micrometers with the dark soy sauce would make the projected spot almost invisible. To make sure that the soy sauce and the slide are both cold, I put the slide first outside in the cold Canadian winter, and when I bring it back, we see on the thermal camera that the slide shows a very dark color. Then when I turn the laser beam on, we see a spot where the laser beam hits is getting warmer and warmer faster than the whole slide is warming up to the room temperature. And eventually we'll see one spot on the slide that is consistently 2 or 3 degrees above the room temperature. And due to the power of our laser, we're unable to make the spot any hotter. This is because at this temperature, the system essentially reaches a steady state. A big shout out to Dave for helping me film some of the footages used in this video, and let's take a look at our results. 